Placental abruption is a condition during pregnancy when the placenta separates from the uterus. That is, basically, placental abruption is a complication of pregnancy that happens when the placenta separates from your uterus before delivery. The placenta is a temporary organ that connects a growing fetus to your uterus during pregnancy. It attaches to the wall of your uterus, usually on the topper side, and acts as a lifeline that gives nutrients and oxygen to the fetus through the umbilical cord. The placenta also removes waste from the fetus's blood. In placental abruption, the placenta may completely detach or partially detach. This can decrease the amount of oxygen and nutrients to the fetus and cause heavy bleeding in the birthing parent. Placental abruption is a serious condition that requires medical treatment. The different types of placental abruption are, a partial placental abruption. Occurs when the placenta does not completely detach from the uterine wall. A complete or total placental abruption. Occurs when the placenta completely detaches from the uterine wall. There is usually more vaginal bleeding associated with this type of abruption. Revealed placental abruptions. Have moderate to severe vaginal bleeding that you can see. Concealed placental abruptions. Have little or no visible vaginal bleeding. Blood is trapped between the placenta and uterine wall. About 1 out of 100 pregnancies has placental abruption. This condition is usually seen in the third trimester, but it can happen any time after 20 weeks of pregnancy up until delivery. Placental abruption can be life-threatening to the fetus and sometimes to you. Complications from a placental abruption include For baby Premature birth Low birth weight Growth problems Brain injury from lack of oxygen Stillbirth For birthing parent Blood loss blood clotting issues, blood transfusion, hemorrhage, kidney failure. The cause of placental abruption is often unknown. Certain lifestyle choices or abdominal trauma can increase your risk for placental abruption. Trauma or injury to your uterus, like a car accident, fall or blow to the stomach. Each person can have different symptoms of placental abruption. However, the most common symptom is vaginal bleeding with cramping during the third trimester of pregnancy. Symptoms or signs can also include uterine contractions that are longer and more intense than average labor contractions, backache or back pain, decreased fetal movement. Vaginal bleeding can vary and is not an indication of how much the placenta has separated. In some instances, there could be no visible bleeding because the blood is trapped between the placenta and the uterine wall. Pain can range from mild cramping to strong contractions and often begins suddenly. There are typically three grades of placental abruption a healthcare provider will diagnose. Grade 1. Small amount of bleeding, some uterine contractions, and no signs of stress to you or the fetus. Grade 2. Mild to moderate amount of bleeding, some uterine contractions, and signs of fetal stress. Grade 3. Moderate to severe bleeding or concealed bleeding, uterine contractions that do not relax, abdominal pain, low blood pressure, and fetal death. Ultrasound is almost always the first imaging modality used to evaluate placental abruption. The sonographic signs of placental abruption include. 1. Retroplacental hematoma, often poorly etiogenic. 2. Intraplacental anechoic areas. 3. Separation and rounding of the placental edge. 4. Thickening of the placenta. Often 2 over 5. 5 cm 5. Thickening of the retroplacental myometrium. Usually should be 1 to 2 cm unless there is a focal myometrial contraction. 6. Disruption in retroplacental circulation. 7. Intraamniotic echoes due to intraamniotic hemorrhage. 8. Blood in the fetal stomach. 9. Intermembranous clot in twins. The echogenicity of hematomas depends upon their age. Acute hematomas imaged at the time of symptoms tend to be hyperechoic or isochoic compared to the adjacent placenta. As the hematoma is commonly isochoic to the placenta, it may be mistaken for focal thickening of the placenta. A normal ultrasound does not exclude a placental abruption, particularly as the blood may have escaped through the vagina in the case of external hemorrhage. 
In other cases, the retroplacental hematoma may be hypoechoicor of heterogeneous echogenicity. If an abruption is detected, then the larger the size of the abruption, the greater the fetal morbidity. The presence of associated concurrent fetal bradycardia carries a poorer prognosis. Management for small abruptions is usually conservative serial sonographic examinations with measurement of the retroplacental clot volume, antepartum heart rate, and maternal symptoms has been suggested. Thanks for watching. God bless you. If you found this study interesting, then subscribe.